A cartoon built from recycled ideas and second-tier characters blessed by magic to become more than the sum of its parts. A milestone series on the path to television animation dominance for the company who wrote the book on animation dominance. Hi, I'm Dan Larson, and this is the history of Chippendale Rescue Rangers. Chippendale Rescue Rangers is an animated series that originally ran 65 episodes over three seasons from August of 1989 to November of 1990. It's the second in a series of series that made B-list stars out of C-list characters because the A-listers were too important to be featured in actual entertainment media. Figure out what you do! You had all summer to think of it! Chip and Dale have graduated from bit players frustrating Donald Duck on a daily basis to founding their own detective agency. They are private investigators living in a human world on the trail of truth and justice. They're taking on the criminals of the human world and the animal world. Chip is the steadfast adventurer carefully assessing the situation, while Dale is a free spirit jumping headfirst into action, consequences be damned. It's a tough job, but they have a capable team behind them, including the real brains of the operation, Gadget Hackwrench. She's an engineer, an inventor, a brilliant scientific mind, a problem solver, and oblivious to the flirtations of both Chip and Dale. Monterey Jack brings the muscle and adventuring experience, Zipper is a safety net, and more often than not, an emergency source of propulsion. Sometimes, some crimes go slipping through the cracks, but these two gumshoes are picking up the slack. There's no case too big, no case too small. When you need help, just call Chippendale Rescue Rangers. Thank you to 80stees.com for sponsoring this video. Click the link in the description below and use code TOYGALAXY to get 30% off your order today. What's the first thing that pops into your head when I say the 1980s or the 1990s? Don't think about it, just say it. One, two, three, Rubik's Cube. Yes, they have that, or they had that, or they will have that. 80stees.com is constantly refreshing their inventory with officially licensed t-shirts featuring characters, quotes, and logos from cartoons, comics, TV shows, movies, wrestling, and music from the 1970s through the 2000s. So while I can't guarantee that everything you can think of will be in stock, I can guarantee that you'll always be surprised by the range of their selection. 80stees.com has something for everyone. Your favorite heroes like Batman, Spider-Man, Mega Man, Deadpool, and Wolverine. Voltron, both Lion and Vehicle. Star Wars, Stargate, Old and Older, Battlestar Galactica. Motley Crue, Bismarcky, Pink Floyd, and Jimi Hendrix. Find the shirt that's right for you, the one that speaks to your interests, and lets the world know that there's no bigger fan of scratch and sniff stickers, spam, or Kellogg's Fruit Loops than you. And you can prove it because you're wearing the shirt. Click the link below and use code TOYGALAXY for 30% off your order today. Again, that's code TOYGALAXY for 30% off your order. And thanks again to 80stees.com. Chip and Dale got their start back in 1943. Their first animated appearance was in a Disney short called Private Pluto, although their first print appearance was the year before in a four-page comic adaptation of Private Pluto before it ran in theaters. Their third theatrical short titled Chip and Dale in 1947 began to develop them as two unique characters, different hair, different teeth, different attitudes, or at the very least, physical attributes that made it easier to distinguish one from the other. They spent the next nine years harassing marquee characters Mickey Mouse, Pluto, and Donald Duck. They co-starred in nearly two dozen shorts, three of which earned them nominations for Best Animated Short Film Oscars in 1946, 47, and 49. Their last original short, Chips Ahoy, debuted in 1956. For the next 30 years, Chip and Dale's antics were featured in print publications like Gold Key Comics and home video releases. You can get your picture taken with them at Disney theme parks, and they made cameo appearances in various Disney productions, including 1983's Mickey's Christmas Carol. Chip and Dale were created during the golden age of Walt Disney animation, when Disney's resources were laser-focused on theatrical animation production, before Walt turned his attention to theme park construction and live-action television development in the mid-50s. Despite the regular release of feature films through the 50s, 60s, and 70s, Disney's resources were diluted, their competitive edge softened, and their leadership retired. By the release of The Black Cauldron in 1985, a film that cost $40 million to make $20 million, Disney animation was on the verge of industry irrelevance. But there was a plan to bring Disney back to prominence. In 1984, Michael Eisner was named the new CEO of Disney, and instead of closing Disney feature animation altogether, he tasked Jeffrey Katzenberg with turning it around. Meanwhile, Eisner set his sights on Disney's television animation offerings, or rather, the lack thereof. 
Disney's merchandising executive saw a television landscape that was churning out cartoons motivating kids to purchase the associated physical licensed products. Toys, clothes, cereal, games, school supplies, all things that Disney was missing out on without a prominent television animation presence. His first week in the CEO chair, Eisner had a meeting at his house with several of the people in merchandising and a few from animation, including Tad Stones, who had worked on both 1977's The Rescuers and 1981's The Fox and the Hound. The goal was to sell a series with brand new characters to one of the three major networks for the 1985 television season. Ideally, that would be the Wuzzles, because Disney already had a deal with Hasbro, who were already making toys. But just in case, they put a second series, Gummy Bears, into production as a backup based on Eisner's suggestion that his own kids loved the candy. The plan worked, and in 1985, both the Wuzzles and Gummy Bears made it to Saturday morning programming on CBS and NBC, respectively. Tad Stones moved from Disney feature animation to Disney television animation and became a story editor and producer. Gummy Bear's success was followed by DuckTales in 1987, which quickly became one of the most popular, most successful cartoons in the history of television, creating value in characters that had previously been co-stars in Donald Duck's world. In 1987, Donald's Uncle Scrooge and his nephews Huey, Dewey, and Louie were, without question, more bankable than Donald. Part of DuckTales' success was Disney's focus on the characters, the stories, the humor, and the quality of the animation. Disney executives told the New York Times in 1987 that the children's television landscape was a wasteland of cheaply produced, violent action cartoons owned by toy manufacturers, which were turning out 30-minute commercials for their toys. Furthermore, according to Katzenberg, those toy-oriented shows geared almost exclusively to boys were all losing ratings. Disney delivered something different, and it worked. DuckTales doubled the ratings in its time slots, and Disney wanted to do more. In 1987, after the completion of the third season of Gummy Bears, Tad Stones and Gummy Bears creator Jim Magon met with Eisner and Katzenberg. They pitched an idea for a series based on the characters from Disney's 1977 movie, The Rescuers. Unbeknownst to Stones and Megan, over at Disney Feature Animation, Katzenberg was already developing The Rescuers Down Under, a theatrical sequel to the 1977 movie The Rescuers. Miami Vice was very big at the time, and Ken Koontz and Dave Weimers came up with the title Let's Do Miami Mice. Uh, so we had a picture of little Don Johnson with ears and uh, turquoise coats and pink shirts. So we came up with Metro Mice. Uh, we wanted something more exotic, a little friendlier, warmer, uh, and we came up with a larger, more action-packed idea called the Rescue Rangers. We went to uh, Michael Eisner with this presentation and said, here's our show. Michael said, great show, guys, but we don't have a heart to the show yet. You don't have a lead personality who's that strong. On the verge of losing the pitch, Stones and his team considered that one of the factors that made DuckTales a success was the utilization of previously existing Disney characters with name recognition. Knowing that the big names like Mickey Mouse, Donald Duck, and Goofy were off-limits, Stone suggested Chip and Dale. And that's when everything clicked for Eisner, Stones, and Metro Mice. Instead of a single lead, there were two, with personalities that set the tone for how the stories could play out. Chip's pragmatism versus Dale's idealism. Hey, all you bad guys. What's this? Disney has a big surprise just for you. Who are these guys? They're television's newest heroes, and they're turning out the lights on evildoers everywhere. <laughs> hey! It's Chip and Dale, along with Gadget, Zipper, and Monterey Jack in Disney's action-packed adventure, Chip and Dale's Rescue Rangers. Beginning Monday, September 18th on TV 33. Chip and Dale became the headliners with Chip inheriting Kit Colby's bomber jacket. He got a fedora, a nice one, probably a stanzo, that completed the Indiana Jones homage to drive home the adventuring theme. They're nice. For $200, I could probably get... 50 Stanzo brand fedoras. Yeah, I don't think we're gonna do the fedoras. Dale, on the other hand, got a Hawaiian shirt, most likely a reflection of his carefree attitude, but also an homage to Magnum P.I., whether it was intentional or not. Colt Cheddarson became Monterey Jack. Gadget was nearly formed from the pitch. Zipper rounded out the team as a nod to Evenrude the Dragonfly from The Rescuers. Camilla, Chirp, and Eagle Eye were all dismissed. Metro Mice was retitled Chip and Dale Rescue Rangers. Disney made sure to give the production every chance to succeed the way DuckTales had succeeded. The $20 million budget DuckTales started with increased to $28 million for Rescue Rangers. 
The Rescue Rangers theme was written by Mark Muller, who also wrote the DuckTales theme. Vocals were by Jeff Passetto, who also performed the DuckTales theme. It was produced by Alf Clausen, who you might recognize from the credits for The Simpsons, or you might be confusing him with the puppet who starred in the NBC sitcom. My, my dolphin or, uh, or squirrel. Doing that, and the teacher would look around, nobody knew who that was, and then everybody kind of go like that at me, and now they pay me good money to do that sort of thing. So, yeah. But of course, it's Oprah! Um, but, well, we were, we were talking about Gizmo Duck. Today on our show, we have a very, very important guest. Yes, I've done a lot of Gregory Peck kinds of voices uh, over the years. She's Chip. I'm Chip. And I'm Dale. The cast for Chip and Dale Rescue Rangers was stacked with some of the most successful, most prolific actors in the business. Tress McNeil played Chip and Gadget. Corey Burton played Dale and Zipper. Monterey Jack was played by Jim Cummings and Peter Optimus Prime Cullen. Cummings also provided voices for Fat Cat, Professor Nimnall, Rat Capone, and more. Human detective Donald Drake was voiced by Rob Paulson, while his bulldog sidekick Plato was played by Alan Skeletor Oppenheimer. Other cast members included Greg Berger, Carol Channing and Frank, are you kidding me? Welker! Chippendale Rescue Rangers was previewed with the episode Catteries Not Included in August of 1988 as part of a free promotion for the Disney Channel Cable Network. That was followed by a five-part miniseries depicting the origin of the Rescue Rangers that ran Saturdays that began in September. Season 1 picked up Saturdays from March through May of 1989. By September, the rest of the 65 episodes needed for daily syndication were completed, allowing Rescue Rangers to join DuckTales in a one-hour block of syndicated Disney animation programming. In 1990, Disney introduced their third series following the DuckTales method, Tailspin, featuring characters pulled from the Jungle Book like Baloo, Louie, and Shere Khan. Reruns of Gummy Bears, DuckTales, and Rescue Rangers were packaged together with Tailspin as a two-hour block of kids programming called The Disney Afternoon. The truth is, Rescue Rangers wasn't canceled due to poor ratings. Rescue Rangers did what it needed to do, add substance to the growing television presence of Disney animation. And for Disney, the true measure of success was the completion of 65 episodes which qualified it for syndication so it could be rerun for decades at no additional cost. Rescue Rangers continued in general syndication through October of 1995. After that, it moved over to the Disney Channel's Block Party, alongside former Disney Afternoon partners DuckTales, Tailspin, and Darkwing Duck. Unlike so many cartoons in the 80s and 90s, Rescue Rangers wasn't created to sell a line of action figures. That said, there were promotional tie-ins that featured items for kids to purchase, including toys. In 1989, McDonald's offered Rescue Rangers Happy Meal toys, one each of Chip, Dale, Gadget, and Monterey Jack, each piloting a vehicle that looks like it was constructed by Gadget, using a variety of real-world household items like spatulas, cups, and shoes. There were plush dolls, school supplies, coloring books, board games, and a Tiger Electronics handheld game. Just Toys produced bendy figures. In 1991, Kellogg's included a series of four PVC figures in their kids' cereal products, and Disney produced even more figures and dolls exclusive to their parks and stores. Rescue Rangers showed up on PC in 1990 with The Adventures in Nimnell's Castle, as well as the Nintendo Entertainment System with Chip and Dale Rescue Rangers, and an NES sequel, Chip and Dale Rescue Rangers 2, <laughs> followed in 1993. In 2005 and 2006, 51 total episodes were released on DVD in the US, while 64 of the 65 were released in the UK. The entire series was released on Blu-ray in 2022, and as of this video, is available on Disney+. In 2010, Boom Studios brought the Rescue Rangers back to comics hot on the heels of their successful reboot of Darkwing Duck. Eight issues ran from September of 2010 through May of 2011. In 2018, Funko produced a series of action figures based on Disney afternoon characters ahead of the 30th anniversary of the programming block. Chip, Dale with Zipper, and Gadget in smaller quantities just before the line ended. Funko also produced mystery minis and pops. And as of this video, Beast Kingdom is still offering their Chippendale Rescue Rangers two-pack of fully articulated action figures. Zipper is one of the accessories. No word on whether or not there will be a Gadget or Monterey Jack released in the future. Chip, Dale, and all of the Rescue Rangers made a cameo appearance in DuckTales Reboot during the 2020 Season 3 episode Double O Duck in You Only Crash Twice. This is important because... One, it's an appearance in modern media as themselves, exactly as they were depicted in the original series. And two, it establishes new origins for all of the Rangers and their existence within the world of DuckTales. Previously, there was no connection between the shows on the Disney afternoon. Not even DuckTales and Darkwing Duck, which both featured Launchpad McQuack as a main character. The original DuckTales had no humans, but Rescue Rangers did. 
The Rescue Rangers almost had a feature film back in the 90s, but that was canceled after the box office disappointment of 1990s, DuckTales the movie Treasure of the Lost Lamp. They waited 32 years before that dream finally became a reality. Sort of. Chippendale Rescue Rangers premiered at the El Capitan Theater in Hollywood May 16th, 2022, before a full release on Disney Plus May 20th, 2022. Written by Dan Greger and Doug Mann, directed by Akiva Schaefer, it was developed as a spiritual successor to Disney's 1988 film, Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Like Roger Rabbit, it takes place in a real world where animated characters exist alongside regular humans. Some of those animated characters are two-dimensional, some three-dimensional, and the difference between the two states of existence plays a major role in the plot. It stars John Mulaney as Chip, Andy Samberg as Dale, Eric Bana voices Monterey Jack, while Dennis Haysbert takes on the role of Zipper. Original Chip and Dale, Tress McNeil, and Corey Burton briefly return as well. Hard to judge the box office based on a short, one theater limited run and the fact that streaming services don't publish their data. Some reports claim that it was the most watched movie across all platforms the week it launched. Nielsen said it was the fifth most watched program and the second most watched movie across all platforms that same week. Frank Sheck of The Hollywood Reporter said it succeeded where Warner Brothers Space Jam A New Legacy failed. Amy Nicholson of Variety said it was a reboot and an anti-reboot, a corporate-funded raspberry at corporate IP, and a giddily dumb smart aleck committed to mocking its joke and making it too. Rescue Rangers co-creator Tad Stones called it fantastic. Chippendale Rescue Rangers was an early step on Disney's path back to animation dominance. It helped bolster their presence on television while movies like The Little Mermaid, Beauty and the Beast, and Aladdin reclaimed Disney's glory at the box office. It reset the course for kids' television with a focus on character story and humor, and updated characters who hadn't been relevant for decades. The legacy of Mickey Mouse, propelled into the future by Chip, Dale, and the Rescue Rangers. Back to the beginning. The very beginning. <laughs> Let's do the whole video over again. Oh boy. Thanks for watching. Please hit like, hit subscribe. If you're not already a subscriber, thank you very much to those of you who already are. If you're in the position to help the channel grow, please visit our Patreon at patreon.com slash toy galaxy. Several different tiers to address your specific Secret Galaxy content needs. We have a new Secret Galaxy merch shop. Check that out at secretgalaxy.shop. All merchandise is physically in stock and ready to ship. Links to all of this in the description below. And let us know in the comments down below if you're more of a chip or more of a Dale? Are you as steadfast and logical in your approach to the problems in your life? Or do you just jump right in without considering all the potential negative factors and let the chips, sorry, the Dales fall where they may? I <laughs> got you on that one. Me personally, I think I'm more of a Monterey Jack. You know, I get a lot of, I got a lot of experience doing this. I like to think I'm a guy who likes to have fun, a real positive attitude, and I'm super easily distracted. Only for me, it's not cheeses, it's action figures. If you're depending on me to rescue you from a precipice of disaster, better make sure it's not happening anywhere near a decent collectible store <laughs> while I'm rotating the figures on my shelves. Cut.